Thank you for pressing play. Your presence here brings joy to my heart. Thank you for joining us today as we dive into history of Queensland. The history of Queensland encompasses both a long Aboriginal Australian presence as well as the more recent periods of European colonisation and as a state of Australia. Before being chartered and claimed for the Kingdom of Great Britain by Lieutenant James Cook in 1770, the coast of northeastern Australia was explored by Dutch and French navigators. Queensland separated from the colony of New South Wales as a self-governing crown colony in 1859. In 1901 it became one of the six founding states of Australia. Get ready for an enlightening exploration as we dig into indigenous people and understand its role in the broader context. Established theories estimate that between 50,000 and 60,000 years ago, humans first arrived in Australia although some theories suggest this figure to be much higher. They are thought to have arrived either by boat or by land bridge. The most likely route was from Southeast Asia across the Taurus Strait. During the initial 10,000 years, these people and their descendants are thought to have travelled over much of the continent. Around 25,000 years ago, the Ice Age began with a rapid drop in the temperature of the Earth of 8 degrees. Food was difficult to find and this led to the origin of seed grinding technology. This climate change is estimated to have lasted for over 10,000 years. As the temperature rose, the land bridges from Southeast Asia to Tasmania were reclaimed by the sea. About 15,000 years ago, global temperatures warmed and rainfall increased along the eastern coast of Australia. The inland of Queensland, also receiving rainfall, again became habitable. Coastal lands decreased due to rising sea levels and tropical rainforests spread. The Kalkadoon people of the inland central Gulf region dug wells and deep to maintain their supply of freshwater. From 10,000 years until European arrival, despite the favourable warmer climate, humans were unable to develop either agriculture or animal husbandry due to the lack of domesticable cereal plants or suitable animals. When James Cook explored and charted the east coast of Australia in he was able to navigate close to shore in shallow water as HMB Endeavour was flat-bottomed, so he and the other scientists on board had plenty of time to examine the land through telescopes whilst depths were taken every few metres for the charts, but they reported they saw no evidence of either agriculture or permanent structures, which caused them to believe the people were nomads and therefore the land was terra nullius or without owners. The peak indigenous population in Queensland prior to European arrival is uncertain. The number may have been between 200,000 and 500,000 people. Numbers may have decreased at times of epidemics like smallpox. Rough calculations of the population can be made from the knowledge that Queensland supported 34.2% of the total number of tribes in Australia and from the knowledge that 35-39% to of Australian indigenous people lived in Queensland. Queensland was the most densely populated region of the continent with two of the six to seven hundred indigenous nations and at least 90 language groups. As we venture forward, let's examine European exploration in detail and gain a deeper appreciation for its significance. In 1606, the Dutch navigator Willem Janschoon landed near the site of the modern-day town of Wiper on the western shore of Cape York. His arrival was the first recorded encounter between European and Australian Aboriginal people. In 1606, Luis Bez de Torres, a Spanish explorer may have sighted the Queensland coast at the tip of Cape York. In that year, he had sailed the Torres Strait, the body of water now named after him. In 1768, the French explorer Louis Antoine de Bougainville sailed west from the New Hebrides Islands, getting to within a hundred miles of the Queensland coast. He did not reach the coast because he did not find a passage through the coral reefs and turned back. Lieutenant James Cook wrote that he claimed the east coast for King George III of the Kingdom of Great Britain on 22 August 1770 when standing on Possession Island off the west coast of Cape York Peninsula, naming Eastern Australia New South Wales. This included the present Queensland. 
Cook charted the Australian east coast in his ship HM Barker Endeavour, naming Stradbroke and Morton now Moreton Island Islands, the Glasshouse Mountains, Double Island Point, Wide Bay, Ave Bay and the Great Sandy Cape, now called Fraser Island. His second landfall in Australia was at Roundhill Head, 500 kilometres north of Brisbane. Endeavour was grounded on a coral reef near Cape Tribulation on 11 June 1770 where he was delayed for almost seven weeks while they repaired the ship. This occurred where Cooktown now lies, on the Endeavour River, both places named after the incident. On 22 August Endeavour reached the northern tip of Queensland, which Cook named the Cape York Peninsula after the Duke of York. In 1799, in Norfolk, Matthew Finders spent six weeks exploring the Queensland coast as far north as Hove Bay. In 1802 he explored the coast again. On a later trip to England, his ship HMS Porpoise and the accompanying Cato ran aground on a coral reef off the Queensland coast. Flinders set off for Sydney in an open cutter, at a distance of 750 knee, where the governor sent ships back to rescue the crew from Wreck Reef. As we progress through this video, let's shift our attention towards 19th century exploration and settlement and uncover its hidden depths. In 1823, John Oxley sailed north from Sydney to inspect Port Curtis now Gladstone and Moreton Bay as possible sites for a penal colony. At Moreton Bay, he found the Brisbane River whose existence Cook had predicted and proceeded to explore the lower part of it. In September 1824, he returned with soldiers and established a temporary settlement at Redcliffe. On to December, the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement was transferred to where the Central Business District CBD of Brisbane now stands. The settlement was initially called Edinglassie, a portmanteau of the Scottish towns Edinburgh and Glasgow. Major Edmund Lockyer discovered outcrops of coal along the banks of the Upper Brisbane River in 1825. In 1839, Transportation of convicts ceased, culminating in the closure of the Brisbane Penal Settlement. In 1842, a free settlement was permitted. In the same year, Andrew Petrie reported favourable grazing conditions and decent forests to the north of Brisbane, which led shortly to the arrival of settlers to Fraser Island and the Kulula Coast region. In 1847, the port of Maribro was opened as a wool port. The first immigrant ship to arrive in Moreton Bay was the Artemisia in 1848. In 1857, Queensland's first lighthouse was built at Cape Moreton. In the following section, we'll be immersing ourselves in the captivating world of frontier war. Fighting between Aboriginals and settlers in colonial Queensland was more bloody than in any other colonial state in Australia, perhaps partly due to Queensland having a larger pre-contact indigenous population than any other colony in Australia, accounting for over one-third, and in some estimates close to 40%, of the entire pre-contact population of the continent. The latest and hitherto most comprehensive survey estimates that some 1,500 European settlers and the Chinese, Aboriginal and Melanesian allies died in frontier skirmishes with Aboriginals in Queensland during the 19th century. The same study indicates that the number of casualties Aboriginal people suffered in these battles with settlers and native police frequently described by contemporary political leaders and newspapers as warfare, a kind of warfare, guerrilla-like warfare, and at times as a war of extermination is highly likely to have exceeded 30,000. That is a tripling of the hitherto used minimum estimates for Queensland. Yet even this figure is liable to increase if the results of the first attempt to use extensive primary sources to calculate the Aboriginal casualties due to violence on the Queensland frontier in this period is used. A paper prepared by Raymond Evans and Robert Ersted Jensen for the annual AHA conference at the University of Queensland on 9 July 2014 indicated that a minimum figure of 65,000 Aboriginal casualties is a more realistic figure. The native police force, sometimes native mounted police force, recruited and deployed by the Queensland government, was allegedly involved in the oppression, dispossession and murder of indigenous people during this period. 
the three largest massacres of white spire aboriginals in Australian colonial history all took place in Queensland. On 27 October 1857, Martha Fraser's Hornet Bank Station on the Dawson River in central Queensland took the lives of 11 Europeans. The tent camp of the Embryo Station of Cullen Loringo near Springser was attacked by aboriginals on 17 October 1861 killing 19 people including the grazier Horatio Wools. Following the wreck of the Brig Maria at Bramble Reef near the Whitsunday Islands, on 26 February 1872, a total of 14 European survivors were massacred by local aboriginals. The Battle of One Tree Hill and Darky Flat Massacre also took place in the Urs. In this chapter, we'll be unravelling the enigma of separation from New South Wales and discovering its transformative power. In 1851, a public meeting was held to consider Queensland's separation from New South Wales. On 6 June 1859, Queen Victoria signed letters patent to form the colony of Queensland. A proclamation was read by George Bowen on 10 December 1859 whereupon Queensland was formally separated from New South Wales. Bowen became the first Governor of Queensland and Robert Herbert became the first Premier of Queensland. The young colony was keen to fill its treasury. Seeing the gold rushes and their effects in Victoria and New South Wales, the Government of Queensland offered significant rewards to anyone discovering payable gold deposits. Queensland was the only Australian colony that commenced immediately with its own parliament responsible government, instead of first spending time with a governor appointed by the Crown. By this time, Western Australia was the only Australian colony without a responsible government. Ipswich and Rockhampton became towns in 1860, with Merribro and Warwick becoming towns the following year. In 1861, rescue parties for Burke and Wills, which failed to find them, did some exploratory work of their own in central and northwestern Queensland. Notably among these was Frederick Walker who originally worked for the native police. Brisbane was linked by electric telegraph to Sydney in 1861, however, the first operating telegraph line in Queensland was from Brisbane to Ipswich in the same year. Now, it's time to shift gears and explore Gold Rush. Although smaller than the Gold Rushes of Victoria and New South Wales, Queensland had its own series of Gold Rushes in the later half of the 19th century. In 1858, gold was discovered at Canoona, creating the short-lived Canoona Gold Rush. In 1867, gold was discovered in Gympie. James Nash's find was invaluable to the nascent Queensland colony saving it from bankruptcy. Richard Daintree's explorations in North Queensland led to several goldfields being developed in the late Urs. In 1872, William Han discovered gold on the Pommer River, southwest of Cooktown. Chinese settlers began to arrive in the goldfields. By 1877 there were 17,000 Chinese in Queensland goldfields. In that year, restrictions on Chinese immigration were passed. As we progress, let's shine a spotlight on late 19th century and examine its intricate interplay within our topic. 1862 saw Queensland's western boundary change from longitude east to eye. In 1863, the first Chief Justice, Sir James Cockle, was appointed. On 25 November 1863, the Presbyterian Church of Queensland was officially established. 1864 was a bad year for Brisbane. In March of that year, major flooding of the Brisbane River inundated the centre of town. In April, fires devastated the west side of Queen Street, which was the main shopping district, and in December, another fire, which was Brisbane's worst ever, wiped out the rest of Queen Street and adjoining streets. 1865 saw the first steam trains in Queensland travelling from Ipswich to Biggs Camp, which is now known as Grand Chester. Townsville was gazetted as a town in the same year. In 1867, the Constitution of Queensland was consolidated from existing legislation under the Constitution Act 1867. Sugar production was by then becoming a major industry. 
In 1867, six mills produced 168 tons of cane sugar. By 1870, there were 28 mills with a production of 2,854 tons. The production of sugar started around Brisbane but spread to Mackay and Cairns, and by 1888 the annual output of sugar was 60,000 tons. 1871 saw George Phipps, second Marquess of Normanby become the Governor of Queensland. The first record of a rugby match played in Queensland occurred in 1876. In 1877, Arthur Edward Kennedy became the Governor of Queensland. The first meat processed in the state occurred at Queensport along the Brisbane River in 1881. In 1883, Queensland Premier Sir Thomas Sillerath annexes Papua later repudiated by the British government. On to June 1883, the decision to form a rugby union association was made at the Exchange Hotel in Brisbane. In 1883, Queensland's population passed the 250,000 mark. 1887, the Brisbane Wollangara railway line was opened, and in 1888 there was a 483 miles line opened between Brisbane and Charlell. There were other lines that were nearly complete from Rockhampton to Longreach, and others being constructed around Maribro, Mackay and Townsville. By 1888, there were more than 5 million cattle in Queensland. 1891 saw the great shearers strike at Barkeld and led to the formation of the Australian Labour Party. The issue in the strike was whether employers were entitled to use non-union labour. There were troops and police called in, some sheds were fired, and there were mass riots. There was a second shearers strike in 1894. Union-sponsored candidates won 16 seats at the Queensland elections in 1893. The 1893 Brisbane flood caused much destruction including destroying the Victoria Bridge. The land where the Brisbane cricket ground now sits was first used as a cricket ground in 1895, with the first cricket match played there in December 1896. In 1897, native Aboriginal police force disbanded. In 1897, Queensland passed legislation to appoint the first chief protector of Aboriginals in the state. In 1899, the world's first Labour government, with Premier Anderson Dawson as the leader, was elected into power only to last one week. In July 1899, Queensland offered to send a force of 250 mounted infantry to help Britain in the Second Boer War Second Anglo-Boer War. Also in that year, gold production at Charters Towers peaked. The first natural gas find in Queensland and Australia was at Roma in 1900 as a team was drilling a water well. The Mahine Cyclone of 1899 strikes Cape York Peninsula, destroying a pearling fleet in Princess Charlotte Bay. The cyclone claimed the lives of around 400 people, making it Queensland's worst maritime disaster. In the upcoming section, will be shining a light on indentured laborers from the Pacific Islands. During the as many workers known as the Canicus were brought to Queensland from neighbouring Pacific Island nations to work in the sugarcane fields, some of whom had been kidnapped or coerced under a process known as blackbirding. When Australia was federated in 1901, the White Australia policy came into effect, whereby all foreign workers in Australia were deported under the Pacific Island Laborers Act of 1901. At this time there were between 7,000 and 10,000 Pacific Islanders living in Queensland. Most of them had been deported by 1908, by which time there were only remaining. In this section, we'll be deep diving into Federation to First World War unraveling its complexities and uncovering valuable insights. April 1900 saw the bubonic plague enter Queensland at Rockhampton, where it persisted until 1909. On 1 January 1901, following a series of referendums, the six Australian colonies including Queensland federated to form Australia as a nation. Certain powers previously exercised by the Queensland government were ceded to the federal government under the Constitution of Australia. At this time Queensland had a population of half a million people. 
the Traxxon was an Australian automobile built in Brisbane. In 1901, the Chiligo smelters commenced operations. Brisbane was proclaimed a city in 1902. In 1905, women voted in state elections for the first time. In 1908, Witches Falls, now part of Tamarine National Park on Tamarine Mountain, is declared the first national park in Queensland. The University of Queensland was established in 1909. The 1912 Brisbane General Strike lasted for five weeks. With the groundwork laid, let's now examine World War I and its connections to our previous discussions. The United Kingdom declared war against Germany on 4 August 1914. As Australia's new constitution was silent on the declaration of war, on 20 August 1914 Queensland made an independent proclamation of war between His Majesty the King George V and the German Emperor Wilhelm II. Later Queensland made further independent proclamations of war against Austria and Hungary, Bulgaria and Turkey. Initially in 1914 the war in Europe did not impact greatly on life in Queensland, although the existing militia was deployed in the Australian Naval and Military Expeditionary Force attack on German New Guinea. The outbreak of war created a heightened sense of patriotism. The call for Queenslanders to volunteer for the Australian Imperial Force met its initial quota of 2,500 men by September 1914. With so many willing to enlist, the army could insist on a high standard of physical fitness. However, the only women accepted by the army were single women nurses. Women doctors were not accepted by the army, arguing they could not stand the conditions despite nurses enduring the same conditions and, perhaps more tellingly, that male doctors would be unwilling to work with them. This led to a number of Queensland women finding unofficial ways to serve the war effort, e.g. Lillian Violet Cooper, Queensland's first female doctor served in the Scottish Women's Hospitals serving in Serbia while her companion Josephine Bedford also served in the Scottish Women's Hospitals as an ambulance driver in Serbia. Eleanor Bourne, another Queensland doctor, travelled to England to enlist as a medical officer in the Royal Army Medical Corps and later served in the Queen Mary's Army Auxiliary Corps. Visiting London during the outbreak of the war, Annie Wheeler, a married nurse, remained in London and, with the assistance of her daughter Portia, became a volunteer worker for the comfort of Central Queensland soldiers, maintaining a comprehensive card index through which she ensured the soldiers and their families were kept well informed and supported through practical and financial assistance. Eleanor Bourne There was also a heightened suspicion of Germans with any known German military reservists being immediately arrested and detained. In Queensland on 10 January 1916, Canon David John Garland was appointed the Honorary Secretary of the Anzac Day Commemoration Committee of Queens and ADCCQ at a public meeting which endorsed 25 April as the date promoted as Anzac Day in 1916 and ever after. Devoted to the cause of a non-denominational commemoration that could be attended by the whole of Australian society, Garland worked amicably across all denominational divides, creating the framework for Anzac Day commemorative services. Garland is specifically credited with initiating the Anzac Day March, the wreath-laying ceremonies at memorials and the special church services, the two minutes silence, and the luncheon for returned soldiers. Garland intended the silence to be used in lieu of prayer to allow the Anzac Day service to be universally attended, allowing attendees to make a silent prayer or remembrance in accordance with their own beliefs. He particularly feared that the universality of the ceremony would fall victim to religious sectarian disputes. Over 58,000 Queenslanders fought in World War I and over 10,000 of them died. The state's largest recorded earthquake struck in 1918 near Rockhampton with a magnitude of 6. As we enter this new phase, let's analyse between the wars from different angles and evaluate its significance. In 1919 the Spanish flu arrived in Queensland. From January to May 1919 the Queensland government closed the border between Queensland and New South Wales to try to prevent the spread of the disease. The Queensland Commissioner for Public Health was empowered to examine, 
detain or isolate anyone with the disease or believed to have been in contact with a sick person. The Queensland Police were authorised to apprehend people or take other actions to prevent breaches of public health laws. Initially, the only border crossings allowed and supervised by the Queensland Police were Kulangata, Wollangara and Gaudiwindi. But faced with public pressure, the Queensland government extended border crossing points to include Wampa, Hungerford, Wauraka, Adelaide Gate and Mungindi. Mungindi was to become a popular target for border breakers. Despite not being official entry points, the police were required to actively prevent crossings at border locations such as Killeney, Starnthorpe, Texas and Hebel. A number of police officers died from infections acquired in protecting the border. In May 1919 the restrictions on border crossings were removed as it was apparent that the virus was well established in Queensland and police administering the border crossings were returned to their normal duties. Qantas was founded in 1920 to serve outback Queensland. 1920 saw Matthew Nathan become governor and actively promotes British migration to Queensland. The Mount Mulligan mine disaster killed 75 workers in 1921. In 1922, the Queensland Legislative Council was abolished, making Queensland the only Australian state to this day without a bicameral legislature. On 9 June 1925, the Traverston Rail disaster occurs the worst rail disaster in Queensland's history until 1947. In 1927, the Duke and Duchess of York toured Queensland. They were here to open Parliament House in Canberra but spent time in southern Queensland to meet and greet people. In 1928, the Royal Flying Doctor Service of Australia makes the first flight, departing from Cloncury. Also, in 1928, Sir Charles Kingsford Smith landed the Southern Cross in Brisbane, completing the first Trans-Pacific flight. In 1935, 101 cane toads were brought into Queensland to try to control pests on sugarcane crops and bred to 3,000, which were released into areas around Cairns, Innisfail and Gordonville. They have since spread to many parts of Queensland. New South Wales and the Northern Territory. In late 1936 a lightning strike hit the Bundaburgrum distillery, destroying the distillery without any loss of life. It was rebuilt and is currently operating on the same site today. The state's first national park ranger, Mick O'Reilly was temporarily appointed between 1919 and 1923. In the upcoming section, we'll be shining a light on Second World War. During World War II, many Queenslanders volunteered for the Australian Imperial Force, the Royal Australian Air Force and the Royal Australian Navy. Following the outbreak of war with Japan, Queensland soon became a virtual front line, as fears of invasion grew. Several cities and places in northern Queensland were bombed by the Japanese during their air attacks on Australia. These included Horn Island, Townsville and Mossman. There was a massive build-up of Australian and United States forces in the state, and the Allied Supreme Commander in the Southwest Pacific area, General Douglas MacArthur, established his headquarters in Brisbane. Facilities were assigned or constructed to accommodate and train these forces such as Camp Cable south of Brisbane. Tens of thousands of Queenslanders were conscripted into militia reserve units. On 14 May 1943, the Australian hospital ship Centaur was sunk off North Stradbroke Island by a torpedo from a Japanese Navy submarine. Later in the war, the 3rd Division, a militia unit made of predominantly Queensland personnel, took part in the Bougainville campaign. As we transition to the next segment, let's unravel the mysteries surrounding post-war and gain a fresh perspective. The 1948 Queensland Railway strike was a nine-week strike over the wages of railway workshop and depot workers. In 1952, Queensland's only whaling station opens at Tangaluma and closed a decade later. A cyclone crossed the coast over Coolangatta on 20 February 1950 for causing significant damage. The Shearers strike of 1956 saw Queensland Shearers off work between January and October in a dispute over wages. 
Henry Abel Smith becomes governor in 1958. In 1962, the first commercial production of oil in Queensland and Australia began at Mooney. The first long-distance oil pipeline in Australia carried the oil 191 metre the newly constructed Lytton oil refinery near the mouth of the Brisbane River. A programme of drumline shark controller of 1968 saw Sir Joe Jelk Peterson elected as Premier. He remained in that role for 19 years. In 1969, the first natural gas pipeline in Queensland and Australia, connecting the Roma gas fields to Brisbane, became operational. 1971 saw escalating protests in regard to the 1971 Springbok tour and Jelk Peterson declare a state of emergency in the state in the same year daylight saving is introduced to Queensland, only to be abandoned the following year. The box flat mine explosion took the lives of 18 men in 1972. Two years later the 1974 Brisbane flood caused widespread damage. In 1976, sand mining on Fraser Island is halted. Prepare yourself for an in-depth analysis of ERS in this section. 1982 saw Brisbane hosts the Commonwealth Games. In the same year, Eddie Mobbo began action in the High Court to claim ownership of land in the Torres Strait on behalf of the indigenous inhabitants, following the Queensland Amendment Act, which was passed that year. In 1985, the Queensland government tried to end proceedings in the High Court by passing the Queensland Coast Islands Declaratory Act 1985, which claimed that Queensland had total control of the Torres Strait Islands after they had been annexed in 1879. This act was held as contrary to the Racial Discrimination Act 1975 by the High Court in 1988. The well-known Mobo B. Queens and No. 2 1992 decision was handed down in 1992, which recognised the native title. In 1987, in response to a series of articles on high-level police corruption in the Courier-Mail by reporter Phil Dickey, followed by a Four Corners television report, aired on 11 May 1987, entitled The Moonlight State with reporter Chris Masters The Fitzgerald Inquiry, presided over by Tony Fitzgerald QC, resulted in the deposition of a premier to buy elections, the jailing of three former ministers and a police commissioner being jailed and losing his knighthood. Wayne Goss led the Labour government to power in 1989. In 1980, the annual State of Origin series began at Lang Park in Brisbane. Two years later the Commonwealth Games was held in Brisbane. In May 1987, the Fitzgerald inquiry into Queensland police corruption was ordered by Deputy Premier Bill Gunn. On 1 December 1987, Sir Joe Jelk Peterson was forced to resign as Premier of Queensland. His resignation is accepted by Governor Walter Campbell. In 1987, the Brisbane Bears Australian Rules football team joined the VFL as the second team outside Victoria. It was merged with Fitzroy to become the Brisbane Lions in 1997. 1987 saw Brisbane host games of the first ever Rugby World Cup. Expo 88 was held in Brisbane in 1988 to celebrate the bicentenary of the first fleet founding the colony of Australia. The event was very successful and helped promote Brisbane and Queensland on the world stage. Also that year, the Brisbane Broncos and Gold Coast Tweed Giants rugby league teams were founded, followed by the South Queensland Crushers and North Queensland Cowboys in 1995. In 1989, Queensland commenced a three-year trial of daylight saving. On 2 December 1989, the National Party government of Russell Cooper was defeated at the state election. The government of Labour Premier Wayne Goss commenced on 7 December 1989. The spotlight now falls on us as we delve deeper into its details. The US saw Queensland undergo rapid population growth largely as the result of interstate migration. Internal migrants were attracted to Queensland's buoyant economy and the opportunity for young families to more easily purchase homes than market conditions would allow in Sydney. Queensland's population growth during the ERS was largely concentrated in south-east Queensland. 
In 1991, logging on Fraser Island ceases. In October 1990, homosexuality was decriminalist in Queensland, the second last state to do so. By the late years, Queensland's rapid population growth was placing pressure on southeast Queensland's infrastructure, including within Brisbane. Major planning of road, rail, electricity and water infrastructure was undertaken to cope with the growing population, with many of these projects being built during the following decade. In 1992, Queensland held a referendum on daylight saving, which was defeated with a 54.5% no vote. In 1998, the use of the Brisbane and Brema rivers for the barging of coal ceases after 158 years. The first nature refuge established under Queensland's Nature Conservation Act 1992 was declared for Berlin Scrub, a 41 hectare site in the Locke Valley in 1994. Moving on to the next segment, we have 21st century. In 2001, the Goodwill Games were held in Brisbane. In 2003, both Brisbane and Townsville hosted games of the 2003 Rugby World Cup. In the same year, the oil pipeline running from Jackson to Brisbane bursts open at Lytton, causing Queensland's largest ever oil spill. Cyclone Larry crossed the Queensland coast in March 2006 becoming the costliest tropical cyclone to ever impact Australia. That year residents of Toowoomba voted against the use of recycled sewage in drinking water in a referendum halting a project that was described as the world's most ambitious wastewater recycling scheme. 2007 saw Anna Bly become the state's first appointed female premier. According to the Bureau of Meteorology, 2010 was Queensland's wettest year on record. At the end of 2010 and into the next year, the state experienced widespread floods. Toowoomba and the Lockyer Valley experienced severe flash flooding in January. In February 2011, Cyclone Yossi crossed the Queensland coast in February, causing more damage than Cyclone Larry. In 2018 Gold Coast hosted the 2018 Commonwealth Games. It was the first time the city has hosted the Games and the second for the state of Queensland, after Brisbane in 1982. In 2020, despite a low number of cases during the COVID-19 pandemic, Queensland's state borders were temporarily and conditionally closed, and social distancing was introduced. In 2021, the state borders were again conditionally closed, and on July 21, it was announced that Brisbane would host the 2032 Summer Olympics. Don't forget to check out my other videos for more valuable content.